fresh tracks. The dwarf came this way. He is heavy for one so small. I'd be careful not to say that around him. Quiet! Both of you. I hear something. Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here. Welcome back to my video game review series. So today we're going to be looking at another Lord of the Rings game. This time I will be reviewing Lord of the Rings The Third Age, developed by Gryptonite Games, released in 2004. So The Third Age is essentially a turn-based RPG similar to games such as Final Fantasy or Legend of Dragoon. As with many turn-based RPGs, The Third Age is split into two modes. You have a third-person exploration mode where you traverse through areas in Middle-earth searching for various loot, managing your characters, and searching for your next objective. The other mode is a battle mode, which triggers in various locations throughout the game. Those of you who are familiar with turn-based games of this kind will get the hang of it pretty quickly, and those of you not familiar with those kind of games may find it a bit of a steep learning curve. But thankfully, this game is not too overly complicated or overly ambitious with its turn-based RPG elements making it a bit less of a steep learning curve, and a bit more accessible to casual players looking to get into this type of genre. These battles trigger when either approaching a predetermined battle point in the game, or by a meter in the corner of your screen getting darker and triggering the battle automatically. In the early part of the game, you face mostly orcs and wargs, and these battles are extremely easy, getting you used to the game's overall mechanics. As the game progresses, the enemies get considerably harder to defeat, as well as considerably more durable, and the enemy AI seems to improve too. The story of the game is quite an interesting one. It actually takes place alongside the events of the Lord of the Rings movie trilogy, and as you play through the game, you basically experience the events of the movie from an alternate perspective. The main protagonist of the game is a character called Berathor, a former tower god from Gondor who for unknown reasons is in a region, searching for Boromir, who of course at this point in the story is with the Fellowship of the Ring on his way to Mordor to destroy the One Ring. I'm looking for Boromir of Gondor, have you seen him? In the beginning of the game, while searching for Boromir, Berathor is ambushed and attacked by the Nazgul before being rescued by a she-elf called Idriel, who seems as if she's withholding information from Berathor and has some sort of agenda of her own. The character's backstories early on is quite vague, and as you play through the game, you will come across several more companions, each with their own unique personality, as well as powers and abilities that can be used in battle. For example, Elagost, a ranger of the north who is out hunting wargs before happening upon your company, or Hadhod, a dwarf from the Iron Hills with an interesting backstory of his own or Aedon, a rider from Rohan who joins your party later on. All of these characters are very unique in their own way, and you can choose which three of them to have in your party at any given time. You can also choose which one of them to play as in the exploration sections, if you want to. The game has a very sophisticated leveling up system. As you use certain abilities or attacks, they will gain you an experience point in that area, eventually leading to a new ability being unlocked, be that a melee attack, of which there are many for most characters leadership perks, or even magical abilities. Each time you use an ability, it will bring you one step closer to unlocking the next ability in that area. You also gain experience points for defeating enemies in battle. Earn enough experience points and your characters will level up. Leveling up each individual character earns them points which you can delegate to particular skills and attributes. For example, you can choose to increase your character's strength and dexterity, speed or durability, or their spirit, and it's very important when playing through the game to keep your characters as well balanced as possible. Some characters naturally have more durability than others, while others will have more spirit. It's not too complicated a leveling up system, and you should get the hang of it pretty quickly, and if you're familiar with RPGs at all, then you'll have absolutely no problem with it, and will likely pick it up right away. The combat animations in the game, and the numerous attacks, powers, and abilities you can use makes for some excellent gameplay, not to mention plenty of replay value. 
In addition to leveling up your characters, throughout the game you will find chests scattered all over the place. These chests usually contain some very useful loot. Sometimes they will even contain new weapons and armor. Some of the early weapons and armor in the game are quite basic and pedestrian, whereas some of the later weapons and armor are really, really powerful and effective, and way more useful. Another combat feature that the game has is called Perfect Mode. This is basically a power that you have in the game during battles that needs to be charged up between uses. As you play through the game, you will unlock more powerful Perfect Mode attacks, such as being able to summon Ents to completely demolish your enemies, wiping them all out in one hit, or a volley of arrows hitting all your enemies at once, or using Elendi's banner to do some magical damage to enemies. Or even call Gwai here, the Lord of the Eagles, to fly down and bitch slap your enemies for you. Some of these perfect mode animations look extremely badass, and they're there to bail you out if a battle gets too difficult. It's wise to save these up for when you really do need them, which you will in spots. Throughout the game, as you gain more experience, you will also start to figure out some game mechanics yourself and how to make battles easier. On a first playthrough, you may struggle in certain sections, such as Helm's Deep or Pelennor Fields due to enemies who stagger you and seemingly take away all of your turns, so it's important to learn which leadership abilities and items to use to prevent this. Speaking of items, there are so many of them in this game, items that can bail you out in difficult battles, and they should really be rationed properly and responsibly, such as Morgul Decay that can completely remove an enemy's armor. You can actually make the final boss battle of the game extremely easy by using one of these items. Also, items such as Waters of Lorien, which is rare and can reawaken your entire team. Use these items sparingly and carefully and responsibly and try to save them for when you need them, if you can do so, because they can come in handy in some of the later levels of the game. Also, be aware that certain enemies are more susceptible to certain attacks than others. The game also has some pretty epic boss battles, some of the best boss battles of any Lord of the Rings game. For example, you take on the Watcher in the water, on two occasions actually, Sharku and his warg, Grima Wormtongue and his Urukai captains, Gothmog, the Nazgul who popped up in so many locations during the game I could have swore they were stalking me. Seriously, the Nazgul would show up when you really least expect them. The Nazgul with their fell beasts, and an absolutely incredible boss battle against the Balrog alongside Gandalf, which is extremely badass. I don't even know how to put it into words, but man, that battle was hard, particularly on a first playthrough. You also fight the Witch King on several occasions. One of them, he's on foot. The rest of them, he's on his fell beast. You even fight the Eye of Sauron. Yeah, I'm not kidding. One of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in a video game. You actually climb right to the top of the Tower of Barad-dûr and kick the crap out of the Eye of Sauron in the final battle of the game. Crazy, I know, but I enjoyed it nonetheless. These boss battles are incredibly well designed and all feel different from one another. The game's graphics and presentation is fantastic for 2004, as well as the overall sound design. One of the things I really love about the game is the attention to detail. Like for example, you come across certain events from the movie and get so excited to experience them from an entirely different perspective. Certain locations such as Eregion, the Mines of Moria, Rohan, and even Gondor look so much like they do in the movies, and I really love the way everything looks and feels so authentic. It looks fantastic. The soundtrack from the Lord of the Rings movies is utilised really well here, and the game's overall voice acting and dialogue is very interesting for the most part. Remind me never to invite you to my home. Voices echoing down from the mountains. Then lightning struck all around us. The dwarf fought like one possessed, but a landslide carried him away. As you play through the game, you unlock several epic scenes from the movie which are explained and narrated by Gandalf. You also have a feature you can access in the menu called Evil Mode. These are unlocked by completing certain levels in the game, and you basically get to replay these levels. But you get to play as the bad guys. Playing as the Balrog in particular is some experience, I will tell you. By completing these evil mode sections in the game, you can also unlock weapons and items that you can implement into a save game of your choosing. For example, if you want to start a new game, you could add yourself a badass new sword. Overall, this game is pretty epic. As far as turn-based RPGs go, it's not the best one ever made, but it certainly holds up and it's clear that the developers had a passion for the source material. 
The additions to the Lord of the Rings lore, such as new characters and events, while it might not be canon, it certainly was very interesting. Thanks for watching guys, I give the Third Age a very solid 8 out of 10. A great game and I would totally recommend it to any Lord of the Rings fan, or even any RPG fan in general. Let me know what you guys think, stay tuned for my next review where I'm going to be looking at Lord of the Rings Battle for Middle Earth 2, as well as many other retrospective video game reviews in the future. Thanks for watching and God bless.